Hi, and welcome back. We are here with our filmmakers, director Mary Wharton and editor Mari Kiko Gonzalez. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. So I want to start off with asking um, a question on how did you both first hear about this lost footage and what were your initial thoughts when you did hear about it? Well, um, Tom's daughter, Adria, is, uh, who's in the film, she is an old friend of mine and she kind of got in touch with me out of the blue last summer and told me that they had found all of this footage and that they were planning to put together some kind of a film using this footage and they were looking for a director. And um, I had actually seen some of this footage many years ago because a tiny bit of it, like something like 11 minutes of it had been released as an EPK in the 90s when I was just starting my career and I worked at VH1 and, and worked on a show for VH1 where we, we had this EPK to, to use in, in part of a, uh, a documentary program for VH1. But I didn't realize that there was this whole other archive of stuff. Like I had seen little scenes, but there was another, you know, four hours of stuff. And, and Adria told me that they were digging around in the vaults to see what else they could find that was just sort of related to this era. And to me, that was just like, I am such a, an archive geek that I, I just freaked out as soon as I heard about it. I was like, what? What? There's this Tom Petty footage that no one's ever seen. Are you kidding me? And, you know, it was also at a time during the kind of height of the pandemic where I wasn't really sure how I was going to be able to work. And, and, you know, it wasn't really feasible at that time to be shooting yet. And, and when this kind of opportunity presented itself to like, would you be interested in working on a documentary based on this archive? I was just like, let me at it. You know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe how fortunate I was to kind of be in the right place at the right time to have an opportunity to, I mean, I would have been happy just to be able to look at the footage, you know, <laughs> and let alone like do something with it. And, um, and, you know, one of the things Mari and I have a history of, we, we made Jimmy Carter Rock and Roll President together a couple of years ago, which also had a lot of, like, a, a, a lot of archive. And we kind of had this history of, of figuring out, like, kind of how we both like to use archival materials and realize that we, we like, uh, we have a very similar approach to it. And so... Uh, you know, my first call was immediately to Mari, like, Mari, you're not going to believe this, you know? <laughs> Mari, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, it was the best. Mary's like, what do you think about doing a Tom Petty film with all the 60 millimeter film footage? I'm like, wait, what? You know, it's like, of course, it's a, dr it's a dream to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, stumble across things like that. And we, you know, it's like we talk about it too. We were, we were actually just talking about, um, there are a few other films that have that where this archival, you know, from long ago, it's like reappears. So it's like, how do you reimagine that? How do you, you know, tell the story now, you know, you know, in hindsight with all this, you know, um, it's like, I'm thinking about Amazing Grace. I'm thinking about how they found that footage from this iconic, you know, album recording and then made this whole other film about it. I mean, that's a purely a, you know, a record, an album film, but this was similar insofar as like we had a lot of, of this film footage that didn't have necessarily sync sound and all of those other challenges, but it was incredible to be able to work with it, with that material. Yeah, I will, we'll get back to that in a second because I have a, a question about that, but I also want to ask, you know, every filmmaker wants to do right by the story, I think, and, and obviously, uh, you were going to handle it with care no matter what, but was there this extra weight knowing that the family had approached you to kind of craft this moment in time or into a film? Like what was, what was that like? 
I mean, I think there's there was a lot of of um, from from my perspective, the weight was was kind of about you know wanting to do right by Tom, and he was always such a private person that I didn't know that much about. You know, even though I was friendly with his daughter, I honestly didn't know that much about his personal life, you know, because he was so private. And I think that, you know, it was, it was really wonderful that um, Adria was, you know, kind of, she had a very uh, hands off kind of approach to, to letting us like, you know, it was like, here's a bunch of footage, you know, do what you, what you think is best with this. But we were able to kind of, you know, test things out on her a little bit. And, and I think that, um, you know, she was so great about being honest about saying like, you know, I don't know what my dad would have said if he was here now to talk about this. And, you know, she thought that maybe some of the pieces that we were using showed him in a little bit more of a raw, rough kind of um, uh, creative state than, than maybe he would have necessarily been comfortable with if he was still here today. Um, but at the same time, she wasn't trying to control it or stop any of that from happening. It was like, this was what was there. You know, I think one of the biggest worries that I always have is I want to at least make sure that it's factual, that I'm not like sort of, you know, blowing something out of proportion or painting, you know, it's very easy to interpret, uh, you know, what's going on in a scene in, in two or three or four completely different ways, no matter how you look at it. And so, you know, we kept, we really did kind of do our research and, and talk to people and, and really kind of, you know, and everybody's memory of certain things are different. We did interviews with, you know, six or so different people asking them about the same thing and they'll all tell you something different about it, you know, because yeah. it's coming through the lens of their own perspective. So, um, and for so many years later, you know, so yeah. it's like, you know, that's, that's what's challenging. And that's, what's interesting too, Mary, just something that, you know, you said before and what we were talking about, what was so great about, you know, collaborating with Adria is it's true at the very beginning because of her relationship with Mary, like she really, really trusted Mary to tell this story. I mean, when you think about it, Tom, only, he just passed away in 2017, you know, and this is her dad. Yes, he's Tom Petty, but this is her father. So I think I was thinking about that from the beginning. Imagine what that's like for us to look at our parent, who's this cultural icon, this, you know, and we have to be able to tell that. And she has to be able to look at that with some element of objectivity, which is really hard to do. But it's like, instead, she's like, okay, Mary, I know what you can do. I know what you got. Like, I want you guys to have freedom. And she was very explicit about that at the beginning. And then Mary and I, something that we talked about that we felt was very important about that perspective and about those voices that she was just saying is that we wanted it to be only from that era, right? Even though we had new interviews that we shot now, just insofar as Tom's perspective, I mean, because there's Tom, Tom's interviews from before the album and way after, like, you know, close up until the time that he passed away. So it's like when he's reflecting in 2016 and 2017 and his idea and his memories about the album are very, very different than right in that moment when he was discussing it, you know, in 1994 or 95. So we wanted to make sure that Tom's voice was very clean and clear in, in that period and in that frame of while things were so new. Um, so that was also something that was, we were very mindful about. Yeah, I think it comes across, because um, it, it does, it feels like a time capsule and that's mm -hmm. that's another thing I want to talk about too, but the, the and you, you kind of hinted on this as well, but I think I mean, digging into the footage, like because you had seen a little bit of it first and then you're digging into more of it, how, what helped you to really contextualize it um, into creating this, this moment? Like what else were you looking at as far as the archival material or interviews or 
you know, what helped you kind of be in that bubble? I, th I think it was a lot to do with the choice that we made early on that was really driven by Mari that I would, I would, you know, pull out, you know, different pieces of interview from Tom that were from, you know, other eras, like, you know, Peter Bogdanovich did a, a documentary about Tom in 2007, I think, where they, you know, they discussed his entire life in great detail. There are like hours and hours of interviews. And I'd be like, oh, maybe we can use this little piece of that for, for here. And, and Mari would listen to it and be like, it's not right. It just doesn't feel like it. And keeping Tom's voice in that moment of that time period of the record was such a, a crucial and very early decision that we made that honestly made our job a hell of a lot harder because we were limited to the pieces that we had from that period. But it was one of those those things where the effort was it paid off because we never sort of you know visually we don't really go outside of that time capsule and story wise we don't go out you know there's like people make a reference to some of his early hits you know refugee and and um uh, I'm trying to think what's the American girl we play, you know, little bits of those songs. But, you know, even when we looked at like, oh, should we play instead of the refugee performance from the Wildflowers tour, should we play a classic, you know, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers from the 70s piece of footage. And we tried it. And it was just it to me, it was just wrong it just was like it was like ah we're breaking the the spell of the time capsule by doing that and and you know we didn't want to try to tell his whole story of his life because that had been done and so there's hints of you know a past life and there's hints of you know what's to come in the future from this little time capsule and obviously we acknowledge in the end that he's no longer with us and and that's a very sad and emotional moment for everyone that we kind of it was sort of like we had to let those characters have that that moment of of catharsis of looking back on this now and being like I miss my friend and you know it was it I felt like that would have been um, doing our characters a disservice and the audience a disservice to not like let let you understand that you know what has happened has happened you know so but I do think that 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 idea of of staying visually in that time period and from a sense of of audio wise from Tom keeping him in that more present tense way of speaking and in a voice that sounded like he sounds in the footage that you're seeing him. Um, Cause you know, his voice did change as he got older as, as everyone's does. Yeah. Um, I think that was, you know, a big uh, part of the secret sauce there. Well, and I wanna, yeah. you, you talk about the interviews as well, but I, I'm, what I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the interviews with the Heartbreakers and, you know, Rick Rubin in the, the more contemporary space, because everyone seemed very open and candid to talk about something that I think would still be pretty emotional and raw, as, as Mari said, it's, it, it really isn't like it's been that much time. I mean, we're yeah. kind of in this, and you mentioned that it was yeah. done during the pandemic, which we're kind of a little bit isolated, and I think everyone's a little bit more emotional and kind of reflective. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I think it really, those moments really speak to the kind of love and friction that is in every band or in every, any creative group. Um, right. How, I mean, what did it, did they seem very open from the beginning of the process to talk about this in a, in a period that was perhaps raw, more raw than you would do maybe five years from now even? Yeah, I mean, I think that they, um you know, they were certainly, you know, really open to participating in, in the process, in the project. And it's something that, you know, they've been 
they had kind of what spurred the discovery of this footage was that they had been planning to release this box set, which, you know, Tom had always wanted to do and they were doing it kind of to honor his wishes. And so they, they had been digging around in the archives to see what kind of audio materials they would, they would add to the box set to make it more of a fuller picture of, of, you know, the whole album and all the outtakes that had never been released and to make it into a more interesting, you know, collection than just re-releasing Wildflowers because it's the anniversary or whatever, you know? So, so the band had been involved in, in that process of thinking about this music and that time period and writing down their memories for, you know, a booklet for the box set. So it wasn't completely, um, you know, it was fresh in their minds and they had, they had been going through that. But I think too, it's interesting, like with, with people like, you know, Ben Montage and, and Mike Campbell who have, probably given a million interviews over the years. Yeah. And one of the things that is always a little bit of um, a challenge when you're it, when you're interviewing someone who's very sort of practiced at giving interviews and they have their memory of how they tell that particular story might even be stronger than their actual memory of the event that they're telling the story about. Like you just remember this is how I tell this story every time someone asks me about that moment. And so as, as a filmmaker, your challenge is to kind of get them, get, let them get that out and then get around it and, and get into other angles on it or other perspectives, or just to like get them to kind of get beyond the practice story and, and really talk to you. And, this was really a, a challenge to, to, that it was even more challenging because of the pandemic where I was doing all of these interviews remotely. So it was kind of like this. It was like so you're a pro, you're pro at this. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, if I never do another zoom, I won't be sad, but <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to be doing a lot more zooms for a while. You know? But, um, but yeah, I think that I think that what um, what I try to do anyway is just show how much I how much respect I had for the material and and that I, I you know I wasn't um, you know I had done my research before I talked to them and and I had a lot of respect for them as as creative you know, interval parts of, of the Tom Petty, um, you know, music making process. Uh, and, and I think that they could sense that. And, and I guess, you know, that, that probably helps to when you feel like you're talking to someone who's, you know, challenging you to think about things in a new way, maybe, um, but with the utmost, you know, respect for, for what you've done and, and a tr genuine love of the music that you've created. And I think that, you know, that's something that, um, you know, that, that musicians respond, I think, when you, when you can demonstrate that you, you truly know their work and, and truly appreciate it and and can find as much joy and heartbreak and everything that is wrapped up in their music as as they know is there and it's not just like oh yeah that was a cool ditty you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mari I have a question for you about yeah. kind of crafting um the world and and because we keep talking about it as this time capsule and I think with mm -hmm. Music docs, um, both of you are very well versed in them, but you know, having the music uh, is often such a challenge to be able to include because of licensing or other factors. Mm -hmm. And how much of you know, being able to use the album's music was really influencing, um, to be able to incorporate that into the film, how much of that influenced your approach and style and, and how you were looking at editing 
That's a really good question. Actually, Mary and I, because we are like, yes, we're such archival nerds, but we're also both such music nerds too. Like we just listen to, I mean, obviously I listened to the album, but for me, it's like, I wanted to just see what we had. Okay, so here is all of the footage that Mary, that we have for this film. And not all of the songs were shot in the studio. Like we don't have a lot of, we didn't have footage for everything, even some of the bigger songs, you know? So it's like, we sort of started with, all right, let's just see what they shot. Let's see how it sounds. And a lot of it, you know, like we were discussing earlier, is very raw. You see them woodshedding all these songs. You really don't see Tom Petty like that. He's a perfectionist. He was a perfectionist and you saw always the finished product. So we're using stuff that's not mixed. It's like all the stuff that they're record, you know, recording in the room. You know, he's like working out choruses. Sometimes it's acoustic when he's really playing electric on this song or, you know, so it was very, it was a very, very intimate and sort of obviously personal way to see this particular artist who is, who's very private and closed off in that realm of his life, which is insofar as like choosing the songs, we basically, well, I mean, we knew that, you know, the album obviously has a certain order and Tom, you know, was very deliberate in what the order of songs were. I mean, there was a lot of thought that went behind that. And even though this, this album in particular was not the double album that he wanted it to be, he always knew what the end song would be on the album. So Mary and I had talked about this from the beginning. We always knew what the final song was going to be, you know, without even seeing the footage. I mean, I had seen some of the B-roll and some of the orchestra and, you know, when they were arranging it in the, both in the booth and also just the, um, in the rehearsals of the, of the actual wake up time. Um, so that was like one of the first things that, that I was editing and that we were talking about. I just wanted to see what we had of that song and sort of taking it apart and build, putting it back together, like taking e each instrument, just sort of stripping that down and, you know, um, just starting from there. And we sort of approached every song like that. Like, yes, every song has a story behind it. And especially because of what he was going through at the time when he was recording this album, um, just in his personal life. So we, once we started to have these little pods of all of the songs, then we were like, okay, well, what's the story behind this? And what's the connective tissue here? Or are there these non sequiturs that are gonna get us from here to here? Like, what do these things look like in his life? And sort of getting into the rhythm of not necessarily the order of the album, but just with the stories that when they were sh shooting this um, in the studio, just sort of getting the pace that way. I don't know, it was a very organic process, I guess. Like just put, you know, putting all those together, but they were started, we did everything very separately, each of the songs and just sort of, we built those out in that way. I mean, it, it feels very fluid and organic and very much like the creative process, I think, which is um, one of my favorite things about the film. And I'd love to hear from both of you. I mean, you've both worked on a lot of music-based stories yeah. in your filmmaking career. Um, what do you find special about how these two art forms influence each other? What draws you to the music uh, within the film stories? Well, I think one thing that that uh, makes Mari and I work together so well as a team is that we both really like to use music to drive story. So even when we're not doing something that is about a musician, say, we're still going to be wanting the music to really kind of propel the story forward. And um, with, you know, with this, I think that, um, I mean, it's interesting because we were so limited in, in actually, you know, it, like to say that we found this, you know, four hour archive of, of cool material of Tom Petty, it sounds like a lot because the finished film is only 96 minutes but we kind of used almost everything that was even usable. Like, it's not like there are, you know, gems on the cutting room floor that we were just like, oh, it's, it's an, I mean, it, so I think that like the limitations of this particular archive actually helped to kind of shape it very quickly. And, and it didn't like, like Mari said, we knew the end song was going to be wake up time. We didn't really know what we were going to start with or how we were going to get from A to B to C. But once we started 
putting all these things together in, as individual pieces and the way that we ordered them in the sequence of the film didn't really change that much. It's not like I've had some films where you're just like, you're moving stuff around here, there, whatever, yeah. just to try to figure out how to make it work because it wasn't, if it's not clicking together and it's that weird thing where you just, you're like, something's not quite right and you don't know what it is until you, until you find that way that it clicks together perfectly. And I think that this one, very much you know clicked together and i think it was because of the music and the fact that like you know with storytelling is very similar to putting together say a concert or or a a, a, a music playlist where you need to have you know something that's gonna like kick things off and get it going. You want to have some, some quiet moments. You want to have the moments where everyone wants to throw their hands in the air. You, you know, as storytelling, you want to, you want to make people laugh. You want to make people cry, you know, and, and where those moments happen kind of have to flow in a way that's very similar to me to, to like how you would sort of, decide which songs come first, second, third in, in an album. And I think that um, by sort of really listening to the music and letting, letting the material sort of talk to us and tell us how it should, you know, like we, we, we I think that Mari and I are just both really good listeners you know, and um, I think that's what helps me as an interviewer, but I think it help, helps Mari as a storyteller as well, that she's a really good listener, both like musically and story-wise. And, and there is a lot of similarities. I see like just from my limited understanding of, of how albums are put together, it's similar to how films are put together in a, in a strange way. Um, it's not, you're not doing the same things. Like I'm not playing a guitar in order to make a film, but the, the sort of bigger ideas of what you're trying to accomplish are si similar where you have all the, there's the, when you start a project, the possibilities are endless. You could go anywhere with it, right? And you have to make choices along the way. And every choice that you make influences what comes after it. And the music choices that you make in, in a film, making a film are definitely going to drive, like, where does it go from here, you know? I don't know if that is the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mari, you have anything to add on? <laughs> I don't know. I, I loved what you were just describing, Mary, because I feel exactly the same way. I mean, I sort of walk around through life like, like everything's a musical, like life is a musical, you know? If life could be like a hip hop musical to me, I would be in, I mean, I kind of look at everything like that. I'm very mm -hmm. like into hip hop, but um, but aside from that, how the film is, it's, it's kind of, it is exactly what you said, Mary. It's it, the song sort of inform the story, not the album in the order per se, but you know, when we were doing it and I hate to sound like to say this, but it's true. It's like, you have to just vibe it. You have to feel it and you live with it and you listen to it over and over and over and watch it over and over and over. And you know, all the feelings that it conjures and then the stories of Tom's that it connected to and what was relevant with our subjects, with Adria, with Rick. You know, obviously we have a lot of things to, you know, had a lot of things to unpack there. You know, not just the songs in themselves, but what Tom was going through at the time, how we're gonna weave those things in with still being appropriate and respectful to who he was as an artist. Um, but yeah, just sort of, it, it felt like all of those things as we were doing them, everything was like coming alive. And that was sort of informing what we were going to say, what his voiceover, what that was going to be from the beginning and, you know, inextricably intertwined throughout Tom. While everybody else was in the present, he was like stuck in this capsule, like we've all been saying, you know, so um, I love music. I mean, anything that's music, whether it's just like a music documentary or even Car like Carter, I feel like is a music doc, even though it's not, I mean, it is. It's a music doc and music was its own character and yeah. you know, gospel was like a big part of the narrative like that's informed everything else. So, but even, I don't know, I just sort of, I guess, look at, I don't know if you do, Mary, I don't want to, but I feel like we do. Like, I just look at everything 
through a musical lens, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, so I have one, one final question for you both, which is um, if you can say, it, what's your favorite song on the Wildflowers album after living with it for, for as many months as you have? And what, um, if any, memory will you take from, with you from this project? Oh my God, that is, that's like, that's like so good <laughs> voice. Like how am I supposed to pick which, you know? I mean, you know what? I feel like I love different songs for different reasons, but Wildflowers yeah. title track, you know, was the, the song that in the very beginning before we started shooting or editing, I, I had that song just sort of stuck in my head and I would hear it you know, I would, I would dream about it. It was, and, and, you know, it was just kind of like the first thing that I listened to after I got off the phone with Adria, the first time she called me was I played wildflowers right away. And the song, I hadn't heard it in a while. And it was so beautiful that it, it, it actually made me cry just from it's the, the beauty of it. And also like from feeling this, this intense, uh, gratitude that this song had come into my life at this moment. It was so, and and so I, I think I'll always have like a special place in my heart for that song. But I also really love like some of the like, you know, the outliers on the album that were, you know, a little bit outside of of the the, the overall vibe. Like like I love Cabin Down Below. Honey Bee. And, <laughs> Because they're just so fun and like yeah. they sound so southern rock and and yeah. I love that sound and so you know that um, but um, yeah I think I think that those are those are my top three. <laughs> Mari, I mean, Wildflowers is such a perfect. Wild, Wildflowers is like one of those songs where you hear it. It's like this perfect song it's one of those things that's just sort of like served up to you I, it's, I mean the whole album is really beautiful but I always go back to to find a friend that song just kills me every time I mean I could listen to it a hundred times right now and it's just just everything that he was going through like it's very sweet and melodic but the word it's so dark it's so sad it's just like such a sad you know it's all about change and what in midlife crisis and all these things that he was going through it says so much like it, you know that song so it's i don't know it's my favorite and just seeing them work through that song for you know yeah. um i love that song yeah i i will say on i i have a hard time picking just one but i love yeah I, wildflowers is actually a song that i sing to my daughter at night for lullaby Aww. and it has been for uh since she was super small but the whole album i almost feel is like one piece it's very hard for me to like single yeah. them out because they all like I just yeah. have very very distinct memories of listening to the whole album always like it's never just one song and I think that's yeah. what's really beautiful about it and I think that's what's really beautiful about the film is how you incorporate all of that together and um, I just want to congratulate you both on making a documentary <laughs> during a pandemic and uh, making a really beautiful beautiful story as well um so thank you so much for for being here and talking to us about uh tom petty somewhere you feel free um, thank you for having us yeah thank you so thank much. you everyone yeah thank you everyone at home uh for watching and please visit our website docs.afi.com for more opportunities to engage with the festival and watch more films and uh, we'd love to hear from you on social media at hashtag afi docs thanks again everyone See you next time.